Hello all you beautiful people out there. If you are new to my channel, welcome and thank you for stopping by. I hope you hit the subscribe button. If you are returning, welcome back. You know I love you guys. You are the lifeblood of this channel. Today's topic is Daniel, the Haran B inscription, and Daniel 4. Not much else I need to say. Let's get on with the video. Nabonidus commissioned the Haran B inscription to memorialize the restoration of the moon god Sin's temple. The similarities between this inscription and Daniel 4 in the NT suggests that the author of Daniel 4 was aware of Haran B and modeled his story after it. These inscriptions were mainly for publicity and while the vast majority could not read, these would have been communicated via public readings. Exactly how the Jews became aware of this is unknown, since we don't know how the story was disseminated. Of course, it is highly likely that the story developed even further as it was adapted to be about Nebuchadnezzar instead of Nabonidus. Nonetheless, there are significant similarities between the inscription and Daniel 4. The inscription contains a first-person address to the general public, while Daniel 4 starts with a first-person address to, quote, all peoples, nations, and languages, end quote. In the Haran B, Nabonidus announces the miracle of sin calling him to kingship. In Daniel 4, the author attributes to Nebuchadnezzar speaking of, quote, signs of the Most High, end quote, including his humiliation and final exaltation. The third major similarity is that the god Sin forces Nabonidus to leave Babylon for ten years, and during this time, the deities care for him. In Daniel 4, Yahweh drives Nebuchadnezzar away from Babylon to live as a beast for seven years, but Yahweh preserves his kingdom for him. In the inscription, Nabonidus praises Sin for bringing him back after the prescribed 10 years. Nebuchadnezzar also praises Yahweh after the prescribed 7 years. Finally, Nabonidus fulfills the divine command to restore Ehalol, the temple of sin, and concludes with a final praise of his God, whereas in Daniel 4, Nebuchadnezzar finishes with praise to Yahweh. Although a shift between first person and third person narration complicates the structure, this feature is actually literary and not redactional, and it serves the purposes of the cycle. Even though Nebuchadnezzar has proclaimed Yahweh Lord of Kings, the author has not explicitly stated that the king grasps the implications of such a statement. However, chapter 4 takes us into the mind of the king, in which he witnesses his own transformation. This presents him as developing into a well-rounded figure that none of the others do. Many have suggested that the switch to third person in verses 28 to 33 is to avoid the awkwardness of Nebuchadnezzar telling of his own madness, yet the same thing happens in verses 19 through 27. This was actually a good choice on the author's part because the king's comprehension was flawed in chapters 2 to 3, leaving the reader to wonder if a first-person account could in fact be trusted. 
The bulk of the narrative is the dream recitation, their interpretation of the dream, and its fulfillment, which just so happens to set Daniel up as the hero. The verses do not appear in the OG, representing the MT redactor's attempt to tie it into the court tales. So if I actually go into the analysis any more of Daniel chapter 4, I will end up stopping in a very weird place. So instead I'm going to read Daniel chapter 4 and we'll start here next time. King Nebuchadnezzar to the nations and people of every language who live in all the earth. May you prosper greatly. It is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. How great are His signs! How mighty are His wonders! His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at home in the palace, contented and prosperous. I had a dream which made me afraid. As I was lying in bed, the images and visions passed through my mind, terrified me. So I commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be brought before me to interpret the dream for me. When the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and diviners came, I told them the dream, but they could not interpret it. Finally, Daniel came into my presence and I told him the dream. He is called Belteshazzar after the name of my God and the spirit of the holy gods is in him. I said, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, I know that the spirit of God is in you and the mystery is too difficult for you. Here is my dream. Interpret it for me. These are the visions I saw while lying in bed. I looked. And there before me stood a tree in the middle of the land. Its height was enormous. The tree grew large and strong, and its top touched the sky. It was visible to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were beautiful, its fruit abundant, and on it was food for all. Under it, the wild animals found shelter, and the birds lived in its branches. From it, every creature was fed, and the visions I saw while I was lying in bed, I looked, and there before me was a holy one, a messenger coming down from heaven. He called in a loud voice, get down the tree and trim off its, bridges, its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the animals flee from under it and the birds from its branches, but let the stump and its roots bound with iron and bronze Remain in the ground, in the grass of the field. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live with the animals among the plants of the earth. Let his mind be changed from that of a man. And let him be given the mind of an animal until seven times pass by for him. The decision is announced by messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict so that the living may know that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to whoever he wishes and sets over them the lowliest of people. This is the dream that I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had. Now, Belteshazzar, tell me what it means, for none of the wise men of my kingdom can interpret it for me, but you can, because the spirit of the gods is in you. Then Daniel, called Belteshazzar, was greatly perplexed for a time, and his thoughts terrified him. So the king said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its meaning alarm me. Belteshazzar answered, My lord, if only the dream will apply to your enemies and its meaning to your adversaries. The tree you saw, which grew large and strong, with its top touching the sky visible to the whole earth, with beautiful leaves and abundant fruit, providing food for all giving shelter to the wild animals and having nesting places in its branches for the birds. Your majesty, you are that tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky and your dominion extends to distant parts of the earth. Your majesty saw a holy one, a messenger coming down from heaven saying, cut down the tree and destroy it. Believe the stump bound with iron and bronze in the grass of the field while its root remains. 
Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live with wild animals until seven times pass by for him. This is the interpretation. Your majesty, and this is the decree of the Most High, is issued against my lord, the king. You will be driven away from people and will live with wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox and be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of the earth and give to anyone he wishes. The command to leave the stump of the tree with its roots means your kingdom will be restored to you when you acknowledge that heaven rules. Therefore, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice to renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be then your prosperity will continue. While this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar, twelve months later, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, Is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty, even as the words were on his lips, a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. Immediately, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like the ox. His body was drenched with the dew of heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? At the same time that my sanity was restored, my honor and splendor were returned to me for the glory of my kingdom. My advisors and nobles sought me out, and I was restored to my throne and became even greater than before. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of Heaven, because everything he does is right and all his ways are just, and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. I will pick up the literary analysis next time. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, press the subscribe button. And if you want to know when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. All social media links are in the description, including my Patreon. Please consider becoming a member of this channel. The join button is under this window. Keep learning and searching for truth. Here are a few videos from my library. If you haven't watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. All constructive criticism is appreciated. Please leave it in the comment section. Please leave other comments in the comment section. Not only do I love hearing from you, but it also triggers YouTube algorithm. Stay safe, have a wonderful day, and I will catch you later. Goodbye for now, friends.